Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week the European Space Agency's Gaia Satellite assembles the most detailed 3D map ever made of our galaxy. NASA likes the space-based gravitational wave observatory known as LISA again. And China launches the second space station into orbit. On September 13th, ESA's Gaia mission released one of the most detailed and accurate maps of stars in the Milky Way. Now get this, the map included the most precise measurements of the positions and brightnesses of 1,142 million stars. That's 1.1 billion stars, for those who are keeping track. And that is the most ever compiled so far. Now, Gaia was designed to do something called astrometry, and it was designed to do it well. Astrometry is just a fancy word that means the locations and distances of stars. Astronomers need these maps in order to fully understand a lot of things. Stellar life cycles, galaxy formation and evolution, star clusters, you know, stuff like that. Well, Gaia was meant to be the premier instrument for providing the most accurate astrometry that's ever been done. It was launched a thousand days ago and started its scientific work in July of 2014. And like the Enterprise, it has a five-year mission to measure strange new stars, to seek out accurate brightnesses and precise positions, to boldly catalog what no one has cataloged before. <laughs> now Gaia makes its observations from the infamous L2 point by scanning the entire sky many times. The spacecraft slowly spins with a period of six hours. It has two telescopes that each consist of five mirrors, some of them are shared, that focus and repeatedly fold the light over a total distance of 35 meters before it reaches the detector. The two primary mirrors, which are rectangular, are also curved and measure 1.45 meters by a half a meter and are mounted on top of the optical bench or the torus. Opposite each primary mirror are two apertures, windows on the universe through which Gaia collects light. So the map released this week was the result of the first 14 months of scanning the sky and processing the data. The result is the most accurate star map ever created of stars within the Milky Way galaxy, more than 200 times more accurate than the previous most accurate map, which was made by the Hipparchus satellite. The map contains 1 billion stars and shows not only how many, but the density of stars across the entire sky. The stripes and the artifacts in the image that you see here are the result of how Gaia scans the sky, and, will, and they will gradually fade away as more scans are made during the five-year mission. This first map was an important milestone for the mission because it confirms that the satellite is working well and that they can handle all the data. Analyzing one billion stars isn't easy, and there are a lot of challenges working with that much data. And talk about big data. By the time Gaia is done, it will have accumulated enough information to fill one and a half million CD-ROMs. Now, I know you're saying, who uses CD-ROMs? Well, nobody. But you get an idea of uh, what we're talking about here. At least you can visualize it. <laughs> now, measuring distances to stars is challenging, and there's lots of ways that astronomers do it. But parallax and using variable stars are two biggies when it comes to stars within our own galaxy. And so, included in this map are the measurements of 3,194 variable stars. Cepheids and RR Neri stars are important yardsticks for distance. So many of the variables seen by Gaia in this release are in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is one of our galactic neighbors. It's a dwarf galaxy right outside the Milky Way. They got so many because that was a region that was repeatedly scanned during the first month of observations, and it allowed accurate measurement of their changing brightness. Gaia was also able to measure the motions of stars within about 400 star clusters that were up to 4,800 light years away. So what do people do with all this astrometry data? Okay, well, fun fact, in July, Pluto passed in front of a distant faint star, offering a rare chance to study the atmosphere of the dwarf planet as the star gradually disappeared and then reappeared behind Pluto. Now, this was called a stellar occultation, and it was visible only from a narrow strip stretching across Europe, and they are similar to the totality path that a circular eclipse lays down on, the, on our planet's surface. So precise knowledge of that star's position was crucial to point the telescopes here on Earth. So the exceptional release of the Gaia position for this star, which was 10 times more precise than previously available, 
was instrumental to the successful monitoring of this very rare event. So see, to all you map nerds out there, astrometry is cool. <laughs> so way to go, Gaia. Now next, you guys may remember that earlier this year, scientists announced the observations of gravitational waves. These are waves propagating through space-time that were created by the merging of massive bodies in the universe. In the case of the discovery last year, it was the collision of two 30 solar mass black holes. Now that that discovery has been made, there is a lot of interest in building a more accurate and sensitive gravitational wave detector. And this time they want to do it in space. And what you may not know, however, is that NASA scrapped a mission called LISA, the Laser Interferometer Space Antenna, which was designed to look for and detect gravitational waves from space. There were just too many other priorities like JWST and W first, and NASA couldn't really afford to do LISA, especially since at the time, no one had even seen a gravitational wave before. Well, earlier this month at the 11th LISA Symposium in Zurich, Switzerland, a NASA official said he was ready to rejoin the LISA mission, which the agency left in 2011. Now, meanwhile, ESA, who was supposed to be a 50-50 partner with NASA on the previous LISA mission, but never really left it, says it is trying to move the launch of the mission up several years from its projected 2034 date. So the plans for LISA date way back, more than two decades. It, they, it consisted of three separate spacecraft flying millions of kilometers apart from each other, and they, with each one being the vertices of a giant triangle. And together, they would precisely measure their mutual separations from each other, each of the nodes, using sensitive lasers. And thus, they would be able to detect low-frequency ripples in space-time. Now, objects causing low-frequency ripples that are really important to astronomers, such as orbiting supermassive black holes at the centers of distant galaxies, would be different than the higher-frequency ripples that were seen by LIGO earlier this year. They are emitted by collisions of much smaller black holes, and those are the ones that have so far been detected on Earth. But this year has been a banner year for gravitational wave astronomy, and earlier this year, a mission called LISA Pathfinder, which I've told you about before, and we even did a hangout on it back in February, successfully proved that the technology that LISA would use would, in fact, well, work. <laughs> So now the gate is wide open and NASA wants back in. They want to contribute to the mission and hopefully get a launch with partners at ESA in 14 or 15 years from now. And so let's hope that happens. Finally, last week, China successfully launched its second space station, Tiangong-2, into orbit. The new 15-meter-long, 8-ton space laboratory is expected to completely replace its predecessor, Tiangong-1, which was launched five years ago. Now, the first space station launched by China is considered dead. They lost contact with it earlier this year, and it is expected to burn up in the atmosphere late next year in 2017. This new station will orbit the planet about 250 miles up and is carrying 14 experiments that will investigate everything from quantum communication technology to testing out a brand new atomic clock. The station will be capable of housing up to three astronauts at a time for short-term habitation. The Tiangong program is part of an overall goal by China to launch a bigger, more permanent space station into space by 2022 as a direct rival to the International Space Station and other efforts which are led by the United States. Now this latest launch appeared to go well and, well, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> Well, that is it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all SFN Patreon patrons for your crucial support. I, want, I can't thank you enough. I want to thank all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.